All right, we got a good little stand here. We're not quite in canyon country. We are in the rolling hills. We got yucca, we got the right dirt. We got coyote sign everywhere. With a little bit of music, we see a coyote, we start getting prepared. JJ, switch gears. The windmill, 12 o'clock. You got him, Jake? Okay. Hold on, Stearman. I'll stop him for you. Hold on. chicken boys Whew. we're just driving along the road I mean they are coming to the call canine killer Jack the Reaper mid-range pretty famous call been around for a while we just put it on shelves this year um, and I mean on a string boy and you could tell when he seen us I mean it was over don't be afraid when these coyotes are running off, instead of starting to jack your gun and start shooting bullets at these things, I just got on that canine killer and I just, I blew it a couple times and then I just screeled with it real, just like a Rah! And that coyote locked up, you know, got him to stop and it got him dead, plain and simple. We're gonna go get that coyote. That's the number three, right? Yeah. That's number three. We got one more to kill this morning to meet, meet uh, Big mouth over here's <laughs> goal. He's telling everybody we're gonna kill four this morning, so we got a little ways to go, but not far. Good job, guys. And not very often I pull a cameraman off a coyote. Coyote number one was checking the wind. He was working the wind. He was flaring. More than likely, he was gonna be really hard to kill. He had dropped off out of sight. Once a coyote gets out of sight, you really don't know what's gonna happen until he shows himself again. So if you got a coyote coming in easy. You might as well take advantage of it, get your bearings together, get everything right, and get your kill taken care of. Can't run from the Reaper, no sir. That Jack the Reapers work good, the Canine Killers work good, the FLX 500 works good. I mean, everything's working. Um, I believe, I believe if we just sat down and, and howled and done two or three calls on the hand call and every stand, that's, you know, one thing you guys need to soak up on these episodes is once we get into a rhythm it's like when you're crappie fishing you know if they're biting on chartreuse you don't just reach in your toolbox and grab uh, maroon or or dark gray yeah or pink for the hell of it I mean if they're you're catching them on chartreuse you keep catching them and you keep catching them and every now and then I hope we're getting enough of this on video that you guys can see but you will see me switch up 
Like we're killing them with hand calls really good and we're killing them with electronics really good. I switched it up right off the bat. So we know they're just coming to the call good. They're coming to distress sounds and howls real good. I probably will not just sit down and howl, but I will keep up with the distress. But you're gonna see me throw in some different hand calls, throw in some different sounds and see how they react to it. That way if it slows down midday or it slows down this evening, I got something I can I can play with that's that's been a little successful. So um but I'm not just gonna switch up for the hell of it, you know. So we're rolling. We're rolling. This is a heck of an episode. We're strong right now. We're getting lots of B-roll and we're killing lots of coyotes. That's the main thing. I'm pumped, man. Steerman. This next coyote, he's gonna be a little different. One advantage you have of hunting with a buddy is you have an extra set of eyes. Now, a lot of people think I have two sets of extra eyes. A lot of times camera guys will see coyotes, but more often than not, they won't. They're paying attention to their equipment. They're paying attention to what needs to happen. They're getting landmarks. They're getting ready for the action. Well, since I have Steerman with me, we can actually cover twice the ground, so hunting with a buddy's a good thing. He calls out a coyote. We try to make it happen, and it all unfolds in front of us. But anyway, it's rocking. We've killed three coyotes. We're on the way to a hell of an episode. If you guys are just joining us, we're in Colorado. Push rewind on your DVR and watch this crap. We are killing the hell out of coyotes. I got a good feeling about this stand. The dry stand we just made, they were howling in here. We had a good approach. We got the wind right, we got the sun right. You ready to roll? Okay, let's do it, buddy. FLX sounds good. It's 150 yards up there. Has some good range. And the coyote popped out in the ditch. If I was just, if it was just me, I seen the coyote. Coyote disappears. I'm still looking for coyote. There's so many things that can happen. But with that extra set of eyes, Steerman calls him out on the ditch and we got it done. Let's go down and get this coyote and I'll show you exactly why knowing your train is very important. We're walking to get this coyote and uh, Steerman said, well, that's why we didn't see her. A coyote's, you know, a little 18 inches off the ground maybe, I guess, or 20 inches. I can see her tracks right here where she come down, but look at this, look at this ditch I'm standing in. She come out up here a little, about 30 yards or 40 yards down from the collar. She dropped in this ditch and then she went downwind. Now the reason we set up over there, it was not the most optimal setup as far as being able to see. But as a seasoned coyote hunter, coyotes will always end up downwind. We had this big old ditch, which you've heard me call them runways before. We had this big old runway. This coyote dropped in this ditch and she come out where we knew she would pop out. I mean, even if they come to the call and we don't see them, they're gonna end up downwind. And we knew if a coyote come in, we would end up killing it somewhere in this vicinity, which we killed her on the other side of the ditch. A guy taught me one time, Rich Higgins, if allowed to do so, 100% of the time, a coyote will end up downwind. Allowed to do so means if you don't blow his face off, he will end up downwind, period. Let's go get this coyote. It's awesome. What a way to end an, ep uh, end an episode. We're winning the battle here in Colorado, man. Big old coyote, textbook stands, coyotes rolling in. I bet you next week you'll be seeing us right here in Colorado. We're going to be doing some night hunting. Man, it's just awesome stuff. You know what a good start to Colorado. It was a great episode. I mean, four up, four down. 
we literally had minimal dry stands. We're cruising through Colorado. We're getting things done, but we're going to be back next week right there in Colorado. Remember, I'm Steve Kreiner, the dog soldier, and in closing, thank a veteran because without them, none of this is possible. Keep your chin up, move forward, stay fearless, and absolutely apologize to no one. Peace out, homies. Catch you next week. You want to know more about the dog soldier? Join him live during show premieres on Facebook to join in the hunt or share your adventures.